We talked about inductive reasoning already. Can somebody rattle off some like uh, math word that means inductive reasoning? Starts with a P. Ends with Adams. Patterns. Patterns. Well done. So inductive reasoning. You guys are gonna tie that word to patterns. Inductive reasoning. Patterns. patterns. Now deductive reasoning is exactly the opposite. Deductive reasoning is based on facts, based on observation. Now. With deductive reasoning, you're not always correct. It's based on the validity of your deduction. Well, so with deductive reasoning, you say something that you see. So I can say, uh, Elijah's favorite color is green. Now, how can I come to that conclusion? He's wearing a green shirt. Am I right? I am right. Man, I'm Sherlock Holmes. Let me try it again. <laughs> Nathan's favorite color is red. I'm right. Two for two. Crazy, right? So I'm just doing something based on a straight up observation. Try you. Try you. Uh, let's see. Uh, if you, let's see. Man, I'm on the spot now. <laughs> are, you, are you like super sensitive? No. <laughs> <laughs> so I say, you have bad eyesight. True or false? <laughs> huh? You have bad eyesight. True. Yeah. Well, how do I know that? Because you see her wearing glasses. I observed glasses. her wearing glasses. Cool, right? But could you say that? That. What about? Hey, Roland's cold. Are you cold? No. Well, I assumed he was cold because he's wearing a long sleeve shirt. But he's also wearing shorts. But he's also wearing shorts. So I don't know. It's all based on observation. So deductive reasoning is you see it and you say it. Sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong. A very good deduction artist has basis behind their deductions. And you're going to see a guy that is like legit deducer today. Like super good. All right? So inductive reasoning is all based on patterns. Every year, my grandma gives me 20 bucks at Christmas. What am I expecting to get at Christmas this year? 20 bucks, right? That's a pattern of events. So there's two types of things that we have to tie to this, right? When you get to deductive reasoning, there's two parts of it. <coughs> one is called the law of detachment. One is called the law of syllogism. Now, I like to say that syllogism is silly because you can make some really silly arguments with syllogism. Detachment is, is very, very specific, right? So I'm going to talk about detachment first. Now, in detachment, this right here is the definition. Attachment says, in very plain English, if the hypothesis of a true conditional statement is true, the conclusion is also true. That's it. I'm done. Y'all got it, right? <laughs> Does anybody understand that? Let me reread it. Let me read it. Okay. You want to read it or want me to read it out loud? Okay. So, if the hypothesis is true, the conclusion is true. That's called me translating. So, let me give you a, it has to be a conditional statement. This is a hard fact, undisputable facts. If you're bald, then you're Facts. 100% facts. Now, I have to, that is just a conditional statement. I have to make another statement for you to conclude from. So I'm going to say, hey, Mr. Clean is bald. What can you conclude? He's beautiful. Who? Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean is beautiful. Does that make sense? I have to say, hey, this is true. Hey, Mr. Clean's bald. So... Mr. Clean is beautiful. Now, I can't, I can't do this. I can't say, if you're bald, then you're beautiful. I can't say, hey, Roland's beautiful. 
But it's I can't, it doesn't work that way. If I say Roland's beautiful, can you say, can you say, hey, Roland's beautiful, therefore, it, but he's not, is he? It doesn't work. So this part has to be true. You have to do it going, check, Mr. Clean is bald. So, Mr. Clean is beautiful. It has to be check off the first part so you can conclude the second part. Right? I'm going to do the easy version first. Mary goes to the movies every Friday. Hey, today's Friday. So, Mary going to the movies. That is your detached conclusion. Mary's at the movies. Does that make sense? Now, when I make it mathy, it gets a little, ugh, yeah, I hate it. If two segments have the same length, then they are congruent. Hey, BC equals XY. So, okay, now look what it says. If two segments are equal, oh, then they are congruent. Hey, those are equal. So, they are congruent. They have to be specific. BC is congruent to XY. That is a detached argument. If the first part's true, the second part has to be true. Let's get away from the math, right? Let's solidify the understanding. If you eat too much turkey, then you will get sick. Luke ate too much turkey. Luke, so, Luke got sick. Luke is sick. Does that make sense? Yes. You're just making it a very specific part. Now, um, if you sleep too much, then you will miss school. Hey, Lauren missed school. Lauren slept too much. No, uh, can't conclude that. Maybe Lauren's at the doctor. That is true. Lauren missed. I said, if you sleep too much, then you will miss school. And I said, Lauren missed school. Is the first part true or is the second part true? Second part. So the first part has to be true before the second part can be true. It's easy when you read it, but it's hard when you hear it. All right? So that's step one. That is detachment, detachment, detachment. Halfway there. Is that our prayer? Just me? I'm trying to get that copyright. This one's the tough one, right? The for me, the, the explanation makes complete and utter sense. For you guys, it, it doesn't click at all. So we call this the chain rule or the train rule. Let me try and make this make sense. If the locomotive, what do you call the first part of the train? The engine. <laughs> the engine. If the engine starts here, it's carrying the caboose, right? Well, if the engine goes there, where's the caboose going? Exactly. There. Does it matter about anything in between it? No, because the engine's connected to the first car, the first car's connected to the second car, the second car's connected to the caboose. Well, if the engine goes there, the caboose is going there. We call it the train rule or the chain rule. So that's the same thing with the sentence. If you're bald, then you're beautiful. If you're beautiful, then you're a model. So, if you're bald, then you're a model. <laughs> it's silly, right? That's why it's called syllogism, because it's a silly argument. Now, in plain English, in really short, if A happens, then B happens. If B happens, then C happens. So... If A happens, then C happens, right? I like to say, if it's repeated, then it's deleted. So you see how I repeat this B statement right here. Notice that your answer is an if-then statement. That has to happen, has to be a conditional statement. But if it's repeated, then it's deleted. And that's great for you guys on your test because you can just mark out the repeated statements. So on your notes, it says, if Rick takes chemistry this year, then Jesse will be Rick's lab partner. And if Jesse's Rick's lab partner, then Rick will get an A in chemistry. So, if Rick takes chemistry this year, then Rick, wait, that doesn't make sense though. If Rick takes chemistry this year, then Rick will get an A in chemistry. If it's repeated, it's deleted. 
You don't need it to. Because it's a syllogism argument. You're inferring that the first thing happens so the second thing can happen. The second thing happens so the third thing can happen. So you're deducing that the first thing will happen so that the third thing will happen. It's weird, right? This one's a little weirder. That's called syllogism, syllogism. Now, I can make the most absurd argument in the world. I try and keep them different in each class that keeps me on my toes. So should I do it the same one or should I change it up? Change, change it up. Change it up. So let's go with something that you guys always know. If you bring a pencil to class, mm -hmm. right, that's pretty standard in school, then you will drive a Ferrari. Oh, I yeah. piqued your interest now. So I'm about to prove to you that if you bring a pencil to class, that you will drive a Ferrari. Drive a Ferrari. Let me get, take this shot at this. If you bring a pencil to class, <laughs> Then you will make good grades. Cool. If you make good grades, then you'll graduate from high school. Yeah. If you graduate from high school, you'll get a job. Yeah. If you get a job, you'll make money. I don't know how much money, but you'll make money. If you make money, then you can gamble. Oh, all right. If you gamble, then you'll bet on the Cowboys. No. If you bet on the Cowboys, you win a lot of money. <laughs> All right, go with it. If you win a lot of money, then you'll buy a Ferrari. If you buy a Ferrari, then you will drive a Ferrari. So, bring a I prove it's facts, guys. Hard facts. You cannot dispute that. How silly of is that? So you can just like, you can just like drag it on. Forever. You can drag it on forever, or minimally for three stages. Minimally three statements. If you're bald, then you're beautiful. If you're beautiful, then you're a model. So if you're bald, then you're a model. It still works that way. Does that is that kind of tied up a little bit for you guys? You can literally reason anything you want as long as you can jump from lily pad to lily pad, same time. So let's try it. Let's let's apply a little bit of knowledge. This is on your homework. I'm about to do your homework with you, so get that out. It's on your table right there. We have to read just a little bit. <coughs> then you didn't pick it up when you walked in. <laughs> that's it right there. You're right here. Yeah, that's it. I had this little picture. <laughs> We're on question number 18. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can do. Uh, I don't really know. Messe Verde National Park is in Colorado. Simone vacationed in Colorado. So... Simone must have, may have, or never been to the park. So, the park is in Colorado. Simone is in Colorado. So, is she at the park? Is she maybe at the park? Or is she not at the park? Maybe. Simone went to Colorado. <coughs> the park is in Colorado, but where Simone might be at a baseball game. So, she may have. Need a circle. Does that kind of make sense? Does she have to go to the park if she went to Colorado? All right. The cliff, the cliff dwellings in Messe Verde National Park are accessible to visitors only when accompanied by a park ranger. Ugh. Billy is at the cliff dwellings in Messe Verde National Park. So, Billy is, maybe, or is not with the park ranger. He has to be with the park ranger. Killing it right now, guys. Look how this homework is super tough. And then at the bottom, you see these. These just say, tell me if it is inductive reasoning or deductive reasoning. Inductive is patterns, deductive is facts. The rule at your school is you must attend all of your classes in order to participate in sports after school. Hey, you played a soccer game after school, therefore, you went to all your classes. What is it? Deductive reasoning. Specifically, that's a detached argument. For the past five years, your neighbor goes on vacation every 4th of July and asks you to feed her hamster. Inductive. You conclude that you'll be asked to feed the hamster this year. That is inductive reasoning that's based on a pattern of events. So that is inductive reasoning. You can tell by whatever it said for the past five years. 
So it establishes a pattern of rings. All right, these are just for me and they're not in your notes. This one is really tough because it has a little bit of geometry in it. Oh, look at that paper's on the one side. If a triangle is a right triangle, then the triangle has one 90 degree angle. Hey, ABC is a right triangle. So, <clears throat> that's it. So it says check. That triangle has one right angle. So you can conclude, check. ABC has one 90 degree angle. Again, it's a little weirder there, right? Because it's math. So if the first part's true, you can deduce that the second part is true. Oh, if cats prowl, mice will scatter. Hey, mice are scattered. Absolutely. Are you sure? No, because it didn't say, like, that's like the second part. Right. So that says, hey, the second part is true. Why would mice be scattering? Does it have to be cats prowling? Or could it be dogs barking? Or could it be birds chirping? Or could it be python squeezing? So you don't know why the mice are scattering. You just know the mice are running. Now if it says, if cats are prowling, mice will scatter. Hey, cats are prowling. Then you can conclude that mice are scattering. Right? If the light is flashing yellow, then you may drive through with caution through the intersection. Hey, the light's flashing yellow. Perfect, right? People say if it's yellow, let it know. Or if it's yellow, yep. stop and go. That's that. How do we all learn how to drive? All right. This is Siliogism. Siliogism. To take calculus, gotta take algebra two. To take algebra two, gotta take algebra one. So, no. If it's repeated, it's deleted. So you can conclude to take calculus, you have to take out for one. Now this one's weird, guys. This is the last one we're gonna do. If a tree has ragged bark, the tree is unhealthy. Well, if the tree has ragged bark, the tree might be a bird's tree. Can you conclude anything from that? I want to say something, but it's probably wrong. Go ahead. If the tree is unhealthy, then the tree might be a birch tree. No. So you tried to wrap it this way, right? Like this? Well, I, you said if it's repeated, then it's deleted. So I crossed yeah. out the part that was it, repeated. It only works if, it's if this, then that. If this, then that. So you see how it starts with the same statement? Yeah. If you're bald, then you're beautiful. If you're bald, then you're ugly. So if you're beautiful, then you're ugly? Yes. See, it doesn't make sense. I know it applies to me, but does it apply to everybody? No. So it has to be in a chain, right? It has to be if it's repeated, then, it's, then those two statements don't match. All right, so stopping the recording so I don't get copied.